Yeah, that's right. On Monday's Instagram, uh, Iowa quarterback Nate Stanley announced that he received an invitation to participate in the Manning Passing Academy this summer. Yeah, Stanley has started every game for the Hawkeyes for the past two seasons where he racked up over 5,300 passing yards and 52 touchdowns, the most by an Iowa quarterback in back-to-back -back seasons. The Manning Academy is a four-day clinic held at Nichols State University in Louisiana and features former NFL, collegiate players, and coaches, obviously including Eli Payton and Archie Manning. And today, the Daily Island released their women's sports team of the year. And to no one's surprise, it was the women's basketball team. Iowa finished this historic season with a 29-7 record, an Elite Eight appearance, and a Big Ten tournament title, and frankly, too many awards by Megan Gustafson for me to even try to list out. Along with this honor, the Daily Island has awarded Lisa Bluter the DI Coach of the Year. You can read more on the selection in the paper version of the Daily Island. Sticking to the hardwood, the Daily Island announced their Newcomer of the Year, which was awarded to men's basketball player Joe Wieskamp. Wieskamp was on the all Big Ten freshman team last season and for a good reason. He started every game this season and led the team and was second in the conference in three-point shooting. He finished second on the team in rebounding and third in scoring and steals. And just like the women's team, you can read more in the print edition of the Daily Island. Now, Zach, let's step away from the awards and take, talk about some baseball. We have uh, DI sports reporter John Rossin live in the newsroom. Good morning, John. Good morning, guys. Now, John, with the Big Ten tournament around the corner and the NCAA regional field coming clear into view, where does Iowa stand when it comes to making this field a 64? Well, that field's certainly coming into fruition, and right now Iowa's 58th in the RPI. You want to be 55, 50, or higher. That really makes you a surefire lock to get into an NCAA regional. Iowa's sitting at a decent spot. The problem is they don't have a good chance to raise their RPI. Their next six games are a three-game set against Michigan State, bottom of the barrel in the Big Ten, as well as Maryland, who's middle of the pack. So I was really going to have to squeak themselves a couple wins, and then maybe they'll be in for sure. But also, on top of that, Iowa for the first time, top 25 in rankings at number 24. You mentioned RPI. Could you quickly explain the differences between a team's RPI and a team's ranking? So yeah, so RPI is going to include strength of schedule a lot more than normal ranking will. The actual ranking, that top 25 ranking that Iowa has, definitely is more focused on their recent performances, including six straight series wins, while the RPI is going to incorporate their road wins over teams such as Oklahoma State. That was a top 25 road win in early March. So if you have those road wins and you beat ranked teams, your RPI goes up, but that strength of schedule certainly helps. John Rosen live in the newsroom. Thank you. But Zach, we have to talk about a team who's already snuck their way into the postseason. Iowa softball earned the 12th and final spot to slip into the Big Ten tournament where they'll face Wisconsin tomorrow in Bloomington, Indiana. Here's what Coach Gillespie and them had to say about making it to the tournament and facing the Badgers. You play all season long for this moment, this moment to play in the Big Ten tournament, this moment to be able to go on to regionals. And it's it's a, you know, whoever wants it is going to take it. I mean, this, that's the nice thing about going in these tournaments. Winner has an automatic bid into the regionals, and um, that will be our only opportunity to be able to get into regionals. So we've got a lot of fight in us wanting to get back into regionals. We're, we're definitely a different team, like watching the um, other games against them from the past. I don't think they'll be, I don't know if they'll be ready for new us. First pitch is set for tomorrow at 10 a.m. Now as a parting gift today, Dwayne Bakefield hosted a little baseball action last night, but it was not Hawkeye baseball. That's right, Zach. The Quad City River Bandits were in Iowa City to play the Lansing Lugnuts due to the flooding all through Davenport. The River Bandits pitched a combined shutout and won 5-0 in Game 2 of the series. Game 3 is tonight at 635 and is free of charge, but they are accepting donations for flood relief. On top of that, I heard through the grapevine that our fellow reporter, John, who you saw earlier in the show, made a barehanded catch on a foul ball. <laughs> Maybe it's my turn to grab one tonight. But it's, that's all for us in the sports studio today. But tune in tomorrow for another Daily Island Award. Kaylin and Becca, back to you guys at the desk.